Gentlemen, yay, yay, yay. Invention! Give me a hell yeah! Hell yeah! What's up, boys? What's up, man? Hey. First, how are you? How was tour? Yeah. I know a lot of wheels popped and a lot of replacements went down. But uh, just, just, just talk to me about uh, some, some good, some shows that were awesome, and uh, drop all your social media links, plug and promote anything you'd like. Yeah, for sure. Real quick, though, out of honor for you, my friend. Me and uh, Kevin here are gonna make this probably the most interesting interview we've ever had. Yo, let me even make it even more interesting and and rip and rip it with you. Hell yeah, let's go. Like, oh, yeah! Let's rip it. Let's awesome. Go, y'all. I appreciate go, it. Hell yeah. So so tell me tell me about the tour, man. How was it? Dude, it, it it was dope. Um, it really sucked. Like we always hate canceling dates. Um, we had to cancel like the first three on this one because I got strep throat. And like for all my vocalists out there, you know, like strep throat and screaming like does not mix very well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and not only not only it, but even if I could push through it, which I ended up having to like take a fucking steroid just to get through the damn tour. But even though I could push through it on the first weekend. I don't want to expose our fans to that. The only thing I've ever canceled any shows for is for life-threatening or severe illnesses that are transferable to other people. For sure. <laughs> yeah, like COVID. Yeah, COVID, strep throat, the hey, super contagious there. ones. Um, the pirates here. Arr, the pirate har. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Dude, like December 30th of last year, man, I had like this severe sinus infection. It wasn't contagious. It was only sinuses, man. I would... I looked like death, and I went up there and rocked it out. I could like barely sing. Like, <laughs> you got food poisoning on the first tour. Yeah, dude. Oh, dude the first good. tour we did, man, it was like ten minutes before I go on. I'm like freaking puking my guts out, and like. Uh, what did you eat? Actually, what did you eat that caused it? Loves gas station food. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta do what you gotta hey, do, at least man. It wasn't sushi. At least it wasn't gas station sushi. You know. Yeah. That, I that, made that, that mistake. That that's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I bet. I might be stupid, but I'm not dumb. <laughs> For sure. Hell yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I actually, there's something kind of serious I want to talk to you guys about. I want to talk about the decision to change your name. To go from Envision to, to how you spell it now with all the hurdles that it takes to change all the social medias, to change all the Spotify stuff, to inform distributors, blah, blah, blah. Why, why do that, make that decision, and how complicated is it if uh, somebody's watching is interested in, in doing something similar? Um, yeah, so for, for me, one, like, we know because the last time I jumped on this interview, right, we played some of my, like, old, old, old stuff uh, when it was I was just a solo artist. And I was doing like a almost like 21 pilots type shit. So like it's for one, it's the fact that the sound has changed so much from day one that it's it's not the same artist at all, right? Like I was like some kind of pop rock type shit, and now we're like on the border of metalcore. Um, for two, we've had multiple guitarists, we've had a, a DJ, at, two different DJs at one point in yeah. our history yeah. that were in the band, like. Now our DJ does our lights. Um, he does uh, all of our synth tracks and even background vocals. His, uh, his name is Mac. You don't talk back. Yeah, he doesn't talk back. He, he's always on time. <laughs> um, he even plays the rhythm section of guitar for me. Yeah, well. yeah. yeah. Dude is solid, man. <laughs> yeah. um, but it, it was like all of that combined together along with what I'll get to in a second is the business side of it. It was like it was time to like make a distinction that we are the same artist, but we're different. You know what I mean? Um, and then the most important one for me and for any of your artists out there, like when you're wanting to become a band and you're wanting to decide what you're going to be called, like you got to think one, how hard is it going to be for people to find me? Um, you know, if you have like this super weird spelling, it might help you out, but it might work against you. Uh, and two, there's about 500,000 nail salons in the U.S. that are called Envision. Yeah. For whatever reason. <laughs> and there's one right over here in Ocean Springs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And glasses and security. Watch. So when you type Envision into Google, right, we're not in the first 100 results. 
which if you don't know, it's much all about, it's all nail salons. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. And, um, if you type in NVSN, we're in the top four. Okay, so that, uh, it makes sense. Why? How? How hard is it to to convert everything? Um, it it's it depends on who your distributor is for one, because some of them are a little bit more anal about things than others. Um, also, we were moving from uh, our music was distributed through Tragic Hero Records and with uh, Warner, which BG, you know that because you ran into bullshit with them. Tragic, Tragic Hero blocks everything I try to do on YouTube in the past. Yeah, and now they can't because they don't have any control over it. So that was another contributing factor as well. You know, um, so we that made it a little bit more difficult because it was trying to get them to not to take things down and get us all the metadata and it has to like match up correctly like every single down to like the artist credit like who is the producer who wrote the song all of that has to match perfectly when you when you change names and everything and then i the names are so close spotify actually reached out to me and said hey you're trying to claim this profile and it's really close to this other one are you the same person well that's <laughs> cool were, that's cool that they did that at least yeah, yeah, they were nice enough to port our followers over so that we didn't lose any of our progress, and it was it was a dub experience from Spotify. Um, shout out Spotify. Yeah, yeah. Sh shout out shout out Spotify. They're the real ones. As far as the more difficult stuff like changing our website, social media, all that kind of stuff, that's going to take a little bit more time, and I want to have that rolled out by the end of the year. So, Hell it's yeah. worked well for us, I think. Yeah. So my co-host today is JB. He's, there, he's right there. You, you might recognize him. He's co-host uh, pretty frequently. But our first guest today was Aubrey right here. She goes by Aubrey Rose. And we actually hey. asked if she wanted to join in this interview, which completely, I think, caught her off guard. But uh, <laughs> J <laughs> JB, do you have a question for the fellas? And then, Aubrey, I'll let you ask one after that. And then hopefully you guys brought some hot sauce because you know how I do. Oh, I have some. Cool. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, I got a question. So while on tour, tour, what is a do and what is a don't? So like, what is the most important thing to do on tour and what is the the one thing to make sure not to do on tour ever again? Also to expand on that, tell me, uh, tell us uh, must brings on tour, like essentials. Dude wipes. Mm. Holy crap, when you can't shower <laughs> for like four days or so, Dude wipes. I've heard that sure. before. Like baby sure. wipes, hey, dude, dude wipes, wipes stuff like that. We need sponsorship. <laughs> and deodorant and cologne, man. Yeah. The first, two, this one was a little nicer. We stayed with my dad for a couple of days and had a shower, food. Um, he got us a hotel um, at, along with BG, my homie, sponsored yeah, us for our you. tour. They were super appreciative. Um, but the first tour, man, we were out for like three weeks and I think it took like four showers. <laughs> I, yeah. I've heard this before. That's yeah. That's why the baby wipes and the dude wipes are yeah, essential. Planet Fitness wipes. is your friend too. Yeah, and yeah. Planet Fitness, bro. Yeah. yeah, you get if you have a four member band, have two people that have Planet Fitness memberships, and you can get the whole band in to take a shower. Really? I bet. I yeah. Bet. Yeah. So you, you just you're not even you go in there, you guys check in, and they're like, oh, do you want to do you need a trainer? You want to lift? And you're like, no, showers, and you just go straight. <laughs> exactly. That's, yeah, smart. that's smart. That's smart. I mean, we worked out a little bit, and then and then we took showers afterwards. Uh, actually, uh, I actually work for Planet Fitness, so I already got a free membership. Got the ultimate perk. There you go. Hell yeah, Aubrey. Do you have a crazy question or a normal question for the band? I have a question. I don't think it's crazy. Um, hi. If y'all could collab with any artist, past or present, who would you choose? Mm. Ooh. Varsity. Yeah, Joey. Yeah. Dang, you um, should, Alex, you should have told me this. Our AM Falls next single has Varsity on it. I know, bro, but like, uh, I, I don't. We don't produce our own music, and I'm like, I'm not good at chopping up vocals, I and mean, I don't have the best setup. It's like so hard for me. Like I did, I did um, a feature that's that's hopefully coming out soon with the guys in um, Failure. Yeah, Failure yeah. by Proxy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were kind enough to cover the, because I, I told them, I was like, dude, I can lay down some shit at my house, but I promise you, if you, like, help me get in the studio, it's going to be so much better. Um, and they were nice enough to cover that for me. I didn't take any personal expense out of it. They actually paid my producer directly. And um, 
it turned out awesome. Yeah, it yeah, turned out really awesome. I, I've heard the early rough, rough version, um, but Spaz mm -hmm. promised me that it's going to be like altered in a bunch of different ways, blah, blah, blah. And that's that's Nick Miller of uh, Skylar Drive who does all their yeah. recordings. So that should be that should be fun for sure. Uh, yeah, he said he said Nick was like, oh, this guy's good. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Hell yeah. Alex, go grab the hot sauce. If it's okay with you, we actually jammed around about 15 minutes ago. So I'm going to throw on FYE. And, hey, uh, actually, when's the last time you played Distress on stream? It's been a little bit. You want me to throw it back a little bit? Yeah, throw it back. That's a good one, man. Let's and do it. And I didn't realize, too, this is a mistake I made on, on tour, to answer your question, JB, is know what songs your fans want to hear. Yeah. Like, our set got cut in half at the festival, and we were trying to figure out what songs. I was making up the set list on stage. And I cut the stress, and like three people cussed me out. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I had I had a couple people come up to me and be like, "Man, I just y'all sounded great. I just really wish I got here got to hear the stress." And yeah. I was like, "I'm yeah. sorry, man. Our yeah. set got cut short. We had to improvise." Yeah. So did you? So what was? So that's only like a three or four song set, right? Yeah, I, songs, we did um, "Sleepless Reality," "Drown," "The End," and "Fye." And I was like, well, "Fye is the latest video." I thought that would be <laughs> right. Right wrong but distress <laughs> distress is is, uh, is a class it's only 11 months old but it's it's, it's a classic <laughs> yeah exactly hell yeah like uh iggy azalea all right while you're while you're grabbing the hot sauce and i'm playing distress what movie or tv show can you guys agree on that there's no way i can stump you you've seen this movie or tv show and you know it like the back of your hand oh, and we can't say star wars we did that yeah, last time yeah. gotta be something new uh uh Think about it. Think about it, and uh, I'll see you in 30 or 40, 40 seconds. Okay. Okay. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, we're hanging out with Distress. I'm sorry. Oh, with with uh, this shit, we're jamming Distress. Please support them. Please support them. Let's peek in. For volume. Let's peek in. No, you look for the dumbbell door. Oh. Dumbbell door. Huh. Got it. Dumbledore. <laughs> Dumbledore. Harry Potter? Is that yeah. the answer? No, 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 no. <laughs> we're still debating. <laughs> Pirate, what are you thinking? If you could pick something, Pirate, what would you pick? Huh? If you could it's pick, a yeah, I did. <laughs> if you could pick the TV show or movie, wow. what would you select? We said, we yeah, we said Marvel. Marvel. I think we yeah, said we agreed on like the Marvel yeah, movies. We agreed yeah. on Marvel. Yeah, I, I can go for that. So I can pick any Marvel movie. Between the four of us, I think we can get it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, That's JB right. or Aubrey, go ahead and shoot one more off, and let me look up something Marvel related. Oh, well, okay. Gentlemen, if you guys could just stop music for like a month, and you had all the money in the world to do anything, what would you guys want to do as a group? So they have to, they music. have to do this together, but they have a lot of money to do it. Yes, Hold on. I'm high. Can you repeat the question? <laughs> You have a shit ton of money. You want to get high? Anything, <laughs> anything in the world as a group, what would you guys do? Except for music. Except for music. Disney. I'm kidding. <laughs> dude, like, we could like travel to all the Disney parks in the world. Yes, I want to go to the one to shake Dude, dude cool. if it happened like in the next couple of weeks before it shuts down, Galactic Star Cruise. Yes. Because it's Ooh. about to like be non-existent, and it's like five thousand dollars a person. <laughs> <laughs> Galactic Star Cruise? What is that? You haven't it's, heard of it? It's uh, it's oh, like yeah. a Star Wars hotel in Disney World yep. where you're you have you're you, the only place you can go is like the Star Wars part of Disney World, and you're like immersed into the Star Wars world. They give you like clothes, yep. and they go to dinners and have oh, yeah. shows, and it's like you're on a cruise in space for but two you, days. You get you you legitimately get your own character, like yep. your size and That's everything. Dope. And and at the hotel, it's like you're on like a like a star, a real star cruiser. Yeah. Like they have all the windows, like with but they're, screens. But they're screens. closing it down. Yes. yes. Well, because yeah. it's like five or six thousand dollars for two nights. Yeah. It's oh, so no one can. No. Surf, so it's like surf, not surf. many people can do it. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And and for for five or six thousand, you can have a week long family Disney vacation. Yeah. Right. All expenses paid, pretty much. You know, and that that that's what like most of the bells and whistles <laughs> that come with Disney to, on top of that. You know, for yeah. that much money. I mean, I get all the bells and whistles because I have anxiety, so like I just get the. Uh, you know, this guy's fucking <laughs> What what hot sauce were you able to grab? All right, so I got two two of them. I got Texas Silverback Juice, which is made by the homie and relevant saints. Ah, oh, that shit's good. Okay. Um, 
So it's a chipotle yes. hot sauce. And then I have a homemade hot sauce from my girlfriend's dad that's like habaneros and all kind of peppers from a garden made. At Usually home. those are way worse than like a. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like as it, far it's as my eat. favorite hot sauce in the world. Oh. Okay, cool. Well, let, let's see if you're gonna consume some of that right now. In the Avengers Endgame, can any of you tell me the planet that must be visited to claim one of the Infinity Stones? I didn't see that. Oh, uh, oh my god. What is the name of the planet that must be visited oh to god. claim one of the god. Infinity Stones? No, he's talking about the Soul Stone. Uh, oh, is that the one that Thor was on with like the gnome looking dude? No, no, that's the one where the Scar ScarJo had to die so they could get it. Yeah. Uh, okay. Oh my god, oh, where did they find Red Skull? Yeah, oh, that's uh, the name is escaping me right now. Four, three, two. I'm, 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 uh, dude, I, I could name that whole scene in detail except for one. Can I answer it? <laughs> yeah. Gentlemen, enjoy the hot sauce. Aubrey, what is the answer? It's Vormir. Yep. Oh my god. On my end, it does yeah. not <laughs> say that. Oh, it does. It says it says Morag, and then says, but they call it Morir in the in the movie. So that yeah, okay. Yeah, hell yeah. It literally says Morag, and then in the explanation, which is like <laughs> more more near, more near. All right, we pass this around like a communion cup. Pass it around. Right. Take one bottle down. Pass it around. Oh god, it's on my pants. And Aubrey, I'm giving the spin to you. Hot sauce, sour slime. I can breathe. Enjoy. I have to do. I'm gonna add some of this blueberry hell hot sauce to some sour slime and see if it see if it works. Uh, why 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 drown from Ring Me the Horizon? And was there any any other suggestions of a cover song that got ruled out? Um. I was, I think we were in between two of them. Yeah. It was Drown, and what was the other one? Yeah. No, 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 it was Can it was You Feel My Heart? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. So, so both Bringing the Horizon songs were considered. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so, a couple of reasons. The first reason is because uh, when we went to the studio, like, I was having an extremely rough go. Did you have to take a hot sauce shot, too? Yeah, well, I always do it for the guests, but the but Aubrey got it right, so I spun it for her, so I landed on blueberry hell hot sauce sour slime combo. And so technically, we still won, thanks to the homie Aubrey Rose. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. I got Four. you, don't worry. <laughs> Five against one. Um, <clears throat> no, but it, it was because I was going through a really hard time. The lyrics like really hit me almost as hard as my, my own lyrics do. You know, um, it really... And also, I was a really lame emo kid when I was younger, and I I just listened to Drown for the first time like last year, and the first time I heard it, I like started crying. <laughs> it was, you know, so it was very intimate to me. The second reason is we've actually been compared to Ollie a couple of times, like oh, it's like Raymond the Rising's little brother, blah blah blah, like shit like that. And then we did an emo night earlier this year, and we did a couple of Raymond the Horizon songs, and we were like. Holy shit, Alex kind of sounds like Ollie a little bit. And so that was kind of in the back of our heads as we were going through this. Um, we lost a guitarist in the middle of one of our busiest show seasons of our entire career. So we didn't have time to like go into the studio and uh, get everything ready. We recorded this, like, what, November of last year? Like, right after you joined? Yeah, it yeah. went longer. I mean, it went long after. So you've been sitting on yeah. it for a hot minute. It was just all about the timing. Yeah, yeah, dude, we sat on distress for over a year before we dropped it. Really? Okay. Yeah, we we have stuff in the pipeline now. You know, it's just there's a process to everything. <laughs> Can you tell a story, Alex, of when you rocked out so hard you almost like cracked your ankle in half because you fell off a speaker or something along the lines of that? No, I I, I cracked a rib. You cracked a rib? Yeah. Okay. I cracked a rib. Yeah. Yeah, we were uh we we actually got through our set. Um, did the whole thing. It was like his fourth show or something like that. What was it? Fourth or fifth? fifth. Yeah, it was a festival. Um, and it was a festival with the other LA and Shallow Side was it. Um, a little mini Rocktoberfest. And the other LA was going on. We played with them before. They're the homies. And so I was like, 
our set was done. I was just hyping up the crowd being like, they're going to rock your socks, you know, something like that. And I was on the, my stage riser that I don't use anymore. It was level with the stage monitor. So I was looking at the crowd in the element and my foot went on the monitor, which had a slope. And I put my weight down thinking that it was the box. And uh, I was like, that is not the box. Put right off the grate. Yeah, and we're, just we're there just kind of crack. out, closing the set. And all of a sudden, I feel a thud on the stage. I look over, and Alex is laying over the uh, speaker. And I'm like, oh, no. I stopped playing around. <laughs> over all the he said, oh, ah, sh**. My red. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. about it. Dude, like, knocked the breath out of me. I, the microphone fell out of my hand and fell off the stage. And someone handed it to me from the ground. <laughs> Dang. I gotta, I gotta really quick run out here for 20 seconds to unlock the door. My wife just got home, and, but she can't get in. Uh, so I gotta unlock the door. JB or Aubrey, ask one more question. I'll be right back. Hi, G Hi B BG's wife. Question. Go, Aubrey. Okay. Um, what can you tell us about your songwriting process? I've been talking a lot. So we'll... oh, okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, we just kind of bounce ideas off of each other like uh one of us might come to the other one with an idea or something like that because like uh in the previous times like uh our former guitarist like i remember i think it was our song i think it might have been in play yeah um i sent him literally a voice message of just me like humming what the guitar would sound like because I, I don't play guitar but i can i can kind of give you like a an idea to work off of and then me and him got together the next couple practices and literally just started laying it out. And then it sounded completely different than what it is now or what it came out to be as, as the finished product. But, um, but yeah, that's pretty much how it is, though. We just, we just either have ideas or we go to certain albums that we listen to and we just kind of, like, feed off of that. So you're all yeah. like... You're all like... Pirate, check this out. <laughs> and he and, he, and he's like, I got it, I got it. Let's go. Next practice, right there. That was the, yeah. that was a voicemail. I mean, you'd be surprised. Even like a lot of big bands do that exact thing. Yeah. Like a uh, good example, like Lamb of God. They're like, hey man, I got this really cool riff idea, and they have to, they'll either play it or mouth it or something, and they'll just go back and forth with it. Like tons of big bands do it. That and how did how did Alex did, did you, you how did you meet the your new guitarist who's behind you? I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. I apologize. Oh, my name's actually Kevin. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Kevin. Uh, it's actually funny. Uh, me and Kevin went to middle school together, and we had a band we were working on uh, at the time. We had I think it was just you, me, and a drummer. That was it. Yeah. Yeah, and we had like two practices, which really equates to a jam session, and it kind of fizzled out. Um, but we always wanted to do music together, and as we saw each other in different bands over the years, we, we grew up in the same music scene, um, we were like, man, it'd be so cool to play with you someday. Yeah, man, like the old times. And then like 16 years later, this dude shows, or, or 14 years later, this dude shows up to our concert two years ago, uh, almost to the day, almost to the yeah, day. Yeah. and became an instant fan of Envision, was a fan of Envision for two years. Every time he was at the front of the crowd uh, at our shows, he'd be screaming into the mic and shit. And then, um, you know, Chase needed to take a step away and uh, take care of his, his mental health. And first call I called was, was like, Kevin, I know you love this music, man. <laughs> and, I, and I didn't have anything going on, so I was like, absolutely, let's go. Yeah. He learned all of our songs in two weeks and did, like, 11 shows right after that. <laughs> yeah. That is awesome. And him also just being in the same metal uh, group, too. Like, with uh, same little metal scene and stuff like that. So that's how me and him on each other for few years too. Did you know him in middle school? Oh. <laughs> 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 hey yo. <laughs> Fellas, we got time for just maybe one or two more. I appreciate you. Uh this is kind of a simple one, but just what what can we expect the rest of the year from Envision? So after today, but let's say it's Christmas time, looking back, you've done these things in between now and then. For sure. Uh the the biggest thing that I'm I'm super excited about is yeah. 30, 30 past <laughs> July 22nd with Seventh Day Slumber, um, Rise Among Rivals, and um, Carbon Stone, Carbon Stone. Oh, Carbon yeah. Stone Seven, Seven. Um, and then BG, you saw it, but no one else has about the tour that we have coming up in August. Um, so that'll be announced soon. Um, and then 
from August to December, it might be a little quiet, and that's because we're um, actually going out of state and recording like six or seven songs uh, with different people, and we'll be releasing those in 24. With different people? Okay, this this will be my second question then. What do you mean by different people? So like a different producer each single? No, 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 no. no. We're just, uh, we've been working with the same guy, which we still will for these two. We're going to go to him for pre-pro this time. Okay. And some some people have reached out to us and would like to work with us. And so we're going to go see what comes from that. Follow-up question. Uh, a lot of bands don't do pre-pro. Can you, can you explain why that's important in the writing process before going to a producer and, and having recordings done? Yeah. Uh, well, for, for one, especially like, you know, we're, we're a produced band, right? So we go to a producer, he helps us mold our sound, which is like a lot of the label bands from the 2000s too. Like all the tooth and nail bands were produced bands, you know, it's nothing new. It's just more technology now. Um, but one pre-production helps you like, you know, make it your sound and make it who you are and put the most of yourself. Um, sure. Also, pre-pro is just a recorded version of what, how the band used to do it back in the day where they show up in a room and they, they, and a lot of bands still do, they write a song, right? And in, in the jam room and they all come together and someone figures out a way to record it or they play it so many times and then they go and record it on an eight track or something. Uh, pre-pro is the same thing, you know? You, you don't want to necessarily completely write a song in the studio. And that allows you to do that, iron out ideas, toss it back and forth with each other. Um, also, for bands that don't live around each other like we do, like Suns on Fire, uh, their guitarist is in California, and the rest of their band is spread all over the United States, and they come together for tours. So their pre-production is, hey, I got this guitar idea. Can you throw drums on this? You know, and it goes back and forth like that. Um, so it's just a new way of writing songs bringing your sound across and making sure that you're completely ready to go in the studio. Yeah, I, I think it's smart. I think it's very smart. There's a, there's, we talked to a lot of bands and, and very rarely do I hear someone mention that. And that, that to me tells me that you care about the writing, the process, the, the whole procedure to, to give us the sound that is envisioned and you take it very seriously. So kudos to you guys for that. That's awesome. A lot, of, a lot of bands don't do that. Um, yeah. Fellas, if there's any final final things you'd like to toss out uh, as far as plugging, promoting, the floor is yours. Um, yeah, well, I would say, for, first of all, if you're watching this stream and you're not at least following local band Smokeout, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, hit, go ahead and hit that follow button. We love VG at Envision. He's our homie um, and also our sponsor for our summer show, so we got to show him some fucking love. Um, and... Yeah, absolutely. Another great podcast uh, that we love and endorse is The Sound, which is, you know, they're right around the corner from us, but they host fans all around the country and the world because they have a UK chapter. Yeah. Um, so we love those guys. Um, shout out Awaken the Giant, uh, who got us off our asses and made us start touring. And we fell in love with it. Um, am I missing anything? Oh, dirtbag clothing. Yeah, dirtbag yeah. clothing. Shout out Dirtbag. When last question, when can we hypoth hypothetically expect the six or seven songs to drop? I'm just gonna guess in single form and then form an EP, but when can we get the first one of those? Uh I would say um we're actually shooting to release uh, uh, some new content in August before we leave on our next run. Okay, so not too far. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Yeah, I, can't, Excellent. I can't release an EP and then go like a year and a half about dropping any new music. For sure. <laughs> Hell yeah. Well, fellas, enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks for being good sports and uh, doing the hot sauce. I appreciate it. I'm glad you guys got back home safe. And uh, we look forward to the new jam. And uh, I'm sure we'll chat real soon. Yeah. Yeah, yeah man. Love you guys. Good. Love you too. Well, Aubrey, nice to meet you, JB. Nice to meet you, bro. Nice to meet you guys. Nice to meet you. Care. If, you're, if you guys are watching, please support Envision. Go on YouTube. Look up NVSN TV right there. They're almost at 600. Hit that button. Go on Spotify. Do the same thing. Envision. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs>
Smoke out.